Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Martin Drive Show. Welcome back to another episode, our first episode, I should say, of this fall's election coverage. Now, I'm going to bring you objective election news. I do not like really any candidate just because I believe there are smarter, better candidates that could be up. I identify independent. I vote on both sides of the fence, if you will. I love talking politics, but all I want to do is bring you what each candidate is actually wants to do if they are elected so you have an idea beyond the tmz drama show that everyone's been watching for the last what eight years now eight nine years now um so we're gonna start with taxes here this is gonna go over their ideal tax plan which realistically will not be what happens it will be restrained towards the middle because there's checks and balances and the executive branch does not write laws they might write executive orders or pass laws but they do not write the laws the legislature has the vast amount of control in that department so let's go ahead and look at their ideal ideas for taxes because they are both businessmen for life and if you look at how they look at money you can probably get a pretty good look in their mind so let's look at this report President Biden and Donald Trump have very different tax plans they'd like to implement if elected for another term. Very different. There's a $6 trillion difference, at least, between the two sides if each were to get its own ideal policies in place. With broad tax cuts from 2017 set to expire at the end of next year, Biden and Trump are headed in opposite directions. A fair tax code. It's how we invest things to make this country great. And we will cut your taxes even further. That's what built our economy. Here's what's in that $6 trillion chasm and the difficulties with turning those plans into law. This is the bill right here, and we're very proud of it. In December 2017, Trump signed into law the most far-reaching overhaul of the U.S. tax system in decades. So while we get into this, um, we're going to look at how this has actually impacted the American economy uh, and who it has actually impacted. I don't think they'll give you a full breakdown, but I think it is important to note that action was taken here. Um, years 2017 to the end of 2025, so eight years of action was taken in this document. So although I'm not a fan of Trump, or I'm not not a fan of Biden either. I'm not really a fan of anybody. Um, this is action, and let's see if it's action that you know you agree with or disagree with. But let's at least look at what it is. The legislation included lower individual tax rates ending before January 1st, 2026, with a maximum rate of 37 percent down from the previous 39.6 percent. Standard deduction increased. So let's start with the. 39 to 37 percent that's for the highest income individuals i believe um which isn't a massive decrease it's just a slight decrease and i would like them to go into each uh range but from my understanding both democrats and republicans uh want to and have cut taxes for households with incomes under four hundred thousand dollars um that slight tax cut for corporations and for high income individuals would allow them to reinvest more money into their companies rather than giving it to the government, um, which I believe is the core question here between the Trump plan and the Biden plan. Do you trust the corporations with their money more or do you trust the government with the corporations money more? And I don't have the answer. I'm not here to claim I do. I just think that is really the core of that 2.6% that is expiring soon. Child tax credit doubled. And the corporate tax rate... Child tax credit doubled is, I think, huge for, um, you know, the everyday American, really for all Americans. But getting double the tax credit for your when you have a kid, uh, I think, allows people to feel more secure in having a kid, which is important, and raising a family, which I believe is the American way. Rate was permanently slashed to 21%, its lowest point since 1939. The goal was to try to spur investment, to give businesses more to- I didn't get that, we're gonna go back. And the corporate tax rate was permanently slashed to 
its lowest point since 1939. That's very interesting. Now, off rip, initially, the question is looked at, you know, Trump is a corporate man. He slashed taxes to lower than anything since 1939. Um, you know, obviously that benefits the Donald Trump. There's absolutely no doubt about it. It benefits the 1%. There's no doubt about it. But I think it also benefits all businesses, including, uh, you know, medium-sized mom-and-pop shops, the one who have, you know, two, three, four locations, who are corporations as well. Um, so the question, again, it begs the question, yes, it obviously benefits Trump, but the question is, would you rather the corporations have the money or do you think that money should go to the government to, you know, fund the military, fund uh, programs for anything they fund programs for? The roads, uh, for the police, for um, addiction clinics, uh, any hospitals, any publicly funded thing by the federal government uh, is where that money goes. Um, so do you think they use it more effectively or do you think the corporations use it more effectively? was to try to spur investment, to give businesses more deductions, lower rates, lower taxes on their profits so they'd be more incentivized to make profits, to give people more money in their pockets so they would spend more money. But the sweeping cuts also drew criticism. The president is part of the top 1% and the bill is aimed to help the top 1%. So as we get into this graph, Actually, I'll let her explain it, then we'll go. If Congress does nothing, those individual tax cuts will expire at the end of 2025. And the government estimates that the national revenue would follow this line. Neither Biden nor Trump wants that to happen. Trump's plan would bring in less money than the revenue baseline. Biden's plan would collect more. The two agree... We're going to go back a little bit here. Hold on. We just want to get a clean version of this, man. Come on now. Fifty-eight. Wow, this is insane. There we go. All right. So while we look at this graph, what I want to get into is whether it'll put more money into the everyday American's pocket. Um. Yes, on its face it will because your taxes are being cut, but as we get into the Biden plan, your taxes are also being cut there, so you should have a similar amount of money in your pocket from an income standpoint. From a price of goods standpoint, I believe the Trump plan, I think it would help lower prices more than the Biden plan. I'm not an economist. But the reason why is because they would have a higher profit margin. So uh, as competition unfolds, there's more of a margin for them to lower prices. Whereas with higher taxes, uh, they make less money. So I would think with the competition in the market, they wouldn't have the same margin to lower their prices. But will that mean they lower their prices no, not necessarily. We've seen a lot of um, companies just increase prices to increase prices lately just to prove that we'll still buy what they're selling. I think McDonald's was a great example, uh, you know, the Big Mac meal being over $10 in a lot of places, um, whereas they now, you know, had to lower their prices to the $5 meal, proving that they could do it, but for a while they didn't have to. So, Will it work to cut taxes to lower prices? Not necessarily, but I do think it gives a little more wiggle room. But then on the flip side for Biden, you have to remember, look at the baseline. Um, we're not going to get to the two extremes. Remember, you know, the middle is where the baseline is, and we should expect the needle to be pushed a little bit in either side's favor, depending on who has their tax plan implemented. So if Biden's implemented, let's say we get, instead of with Trump having at 2033, let's say $6.2 billion, and Joe Biden having $7.2 each trillion. 
So there's let's say a one trillion dollar difference in each person's tax funds. That means with Joe Biden, you could probably spend more money for you know systems like hospitals and roads, but also the debt. Uh, with Trump's plan, we're probably going to see the government increase money printing, increase spending, and that $33 trillion in debt grow. So while the economy may improve, the United States debt will grow, likely in the long term, potentially lowering the value of the U.S. dollar. And with the Biden plan, if they paid off the debt, it would help. But we've seen even with increased taxes, either the debt's still going up. So again, still kind of, to me, the not good either way but a little look on how both sides could work with the debt. The two agree on extending tax cuts for households that make under $400,000 a year. But there is a major difference in how they would tax big corporations and people at the highest income levels. I will make the Trump tax cuts permanent. You know, they expire in a year. And we will cut your taxes even more than that. Trump's approach to taxes is to try to lower them. Trump and Republicans really believe that low tax rates are incredibly important for the economy. Extending those tax cuts would cost the government up to $4 trillion over the next decade. For example, keeping the reduced rates and wider tax brackets for ordinary income would cost some $2 trillion, and the expanded standard deduction would reduce federal revenue by over $900 billion. There's been some back... So on its face, he's losing the government three trillion dollars. Now, just because he's Republican and it's in red, I don't like the connotation of the colors to the mind of it being bad. You have to ask yourself and make the decision for yourself. Do you believe the three trillion dollars belongs in the government's pocket and that they will do better with it than the corporations in the one percent? That's again the simple question. Who? We'll do better with the $3 trillion. Back and forth among Republicans about exactly how comfortable they are with further increases in the deficit because of tax cuts. In the 2017 law, not everyone got a tax cut. There were things that raised money to help offset the changes they made. But in general, they weren't trying to keep things deficit neutral. They were willing to increase deficits in order to cut taxes. And that's a choice they'll have to make again. On the So again... You know, the government having less money will lead to less deficit being paid off with Trump. But with Biden, more money being spent does not mean the deficit will necessarily be paid off. It's kind of the mantra, well, yeah, more money in the corporation's pockets should mean more money for the everyday American. Higher wages, lower prices. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to happen. It's just the idea behind the plan other side of the divide, Biden wants not only to pay for the rate cuts he'd like to keep, but also bring in additional revenue. Getting that done would not be easy. He wants to extend the tax cuts for people making under $400,000. So it's a couple trillion dollars, not the full four trillion, but you know, a good chunk of that to keep those tax cuts going for most people. So let's say it's three trillion in tax cuts for people instead of four trillion plus two trillion in revenue, meaning uh, overall five trillion dollar difference instead of a four trillion dollar difference. That means Biden's plan is more extreme because it's causing more of a change. Um, that's kind of expected because Trump is just rolling into his same plan, whereas Biden is shifting Trump's plan towards a Democratic vision. So it makes sense that Biden's is more extreme, but Biden's is more extreme. And let's look at how it's more extreme. Beyond that, Biden says he'll increase taxes in other areas to bring in more money for the government. If you want to make or can make a million or millions of bucks, that's great. Just pay your fair share in taxes. Fairness is in the eye of the beholder when it comes to taxes. His idea is basically that high income people and corporations should pay more and that that money should go largely for new programs and for reducing deficit. Biden hasn't laid out exactly where all of this money would come from, but he has outlined what would be some key revenue sources, including raising the corporate tax from 21% to 28%. The Treasury estimates that alone would garner some $1.3 trillion for the government over 10 years. He has also proposed taxes on individuals at the top, like an increased Medicare tax, revamping capital income taxes, and imposing a 25% minimum tax on the super rich. 
So, let's break this down. Um, this could be very good. This is very interesting. But this could be very bad. Kind of like everything. You got to make this decision for yourself. I'm not here to make the decision for you. He wants to impose a 25% tax on the, su on the wealthy. On the super wealthy. Um, what he'll show here in a second is that'll bring in, you know... I think in excess of a trillion dollars. Um, a lot of these tax plans will bring in around four trillion or dollars in excess money for taxes, which can be used on programs and on the deficit and on the things the federal government spends money on. However, does that mean that it'll stay that way where the government's bringing in an extra four trillion? I'm not sure. The downside is if you are a corporation making you know, trillion or billions and billions of dollars, and then you get a 25% tax put onto you and your business's income, then are you more, are you likely to still stay in America? Or are you likely to move your business somewhere else that taxes you less, thus adding to that nation's GDP, and in the end, taking away the overall income that comes through the United States of America? Again, on this phase, this could be very beneficial to helping America pay off its debt and do great things, but it doesn't mean these companies are going to stay. This is a country of freedom of choice, and they could very, very well be like, okay, I understand your tax. I don't want to pay it, so I'll just pay the tariff because the tariff is less than the tax. That set of changes would raise more than $1.8 trillion. Overall, Biden wants to cover the $4 trillion for continued tax cuts and raise taxes by more than $2 trillion on top of that. But there's a catch. A lot of the tax increases that Biden is running on are ones that he ran on in 2020 or is proposed during his first term. Democrats controlled the House, the Senate, and the White House for 2021 and 2022, and very few of the tax increases they wanted got through. As we think about the $6 trillion or more gap between the two candidates, so much really depends on the results of the election. Democrats and Republicans both want to extend tax cuts for the majority of Americans, but even getting that done will be messy. There's likely to be one big tax bill in 2025. And so even if there's a point of agreement on what happens for the bulk of people, the revenue consequences, the distributional consequences, the political consequences are all tied to what happens to corporations and high income people. People making under 400,000 should feel somewhat confident that their tax cuts will get extended because both parties want to do it, but it will be just inextricably linked to what happens broadly with all the pieces of the so exactly um as an everyday american your taxes are going down the baseline and it's not going to be a six trillion dollar gap because the legislature makes the bill the president signs off on the bill yes it's always a messy battle in this country, especially because of how political things have gotten. And when I say political, I mean in a theatrical standpoint. He's the enemy. I want this. He wants that. And it's all a fight rather than a compromise and a conversation. So, yeah, it'll be messy on its face. But the real question is behind closed doors because transparency has been going by the wayside in our country. You know... How much, who will move the needle? Will Joe Biden move the needle towards the blue or will Trump move the needle towards the red? And will corporations and the wealthy be taxed more or less? And the honest question you have to ask yourself is do you trust the government with their money or do you trust the rich and wealthy with their money? And I don't know that answer. I don't know what would benefit America more. I don't know what would benefit the economy more. Um, they're with Joe Biden, the clear inherent risks are that prices continue to go up with taxes increasing. Wages do not go up um, because companies cannot afford it. And the federal government does not, um, you know, use the money properly. Our deficit still grows and things really just go to foreign nations more than anything. With Trump, the risks are clear. The government makes less money. Corporations make more money but do not you know, cut prices, uh, do not increase wages, 
and things stay roughly the same there while the wealthy get way way more wealthy and the government uh, doesn't have as much money to fund programs and foreign nations and the military the benefits of the Biden campaign would be that uh, the wealthy gets taxed more the companies stick around the deficit goes down um, in a perfect world because of it uh, prices probably will stay the same but maybe the government increases programs to where wages go up i don't think there's much benefit on that front with the plan but i do think there could be benefits for the government's deficit uh which in turn could eventually benefit you know americans too because our deficit is so atrocious with trump the benefits would be um far and few between i think governmentally but I think for the everyday American, if it came true, corporations could increase wages because they have a bigger profit margin while lowering uh, prices due to competition because, you know, new companies could enter the market at a lower price, forcing other companies to lower their prices as well um, because they have more of a profit margin, allowing them to be able to change their business structure more and have more freedom in that sense so i don't know what's better i just think that's the benefits and the costs and i think that's for the everyday american to decide which is us so i hope this was helpful i hope you learned something i know i did uh i hope that this is as objective as possible um i hope i can just outline what i think and what i know and from what i've learned so yeah uh thanks for tuning in and Good luck with the elections this year. Have a great day.